How's it going, everybody? Welcome to We Do Tech. Now, usually when you're looking at a buying a new gaming PC, you look at your CPU, your graphics card, your motherboard, and all of that. But pretty much your last thought and the loss of your money probably goes to your power supply because honestly, is the power supply really that important? Yes, you need it, but you just pick up the whatever money you have left for the power supply, uh, except if you're really going massive. But now because it is usually your last thought, most of the times you don't really have a lot of money left for the power supply, so you go for something relatively cheap. But what if you already have an older power supply lying around? For example, I have a older gigabyte 500 watt power supply over here. This thing doesn't have any rating or anything like that. It isn't an 80 plus whatever. Uh, it's, I bought it back in about 2010, so it's about eight years old. So I want to find out if I will actually be able to run a 8700K with say, let's say a GTX 1080 Ti on a 500 watt power supply. Is it going to be enough? Do you need more? What is the minimum amount that you can get out of that power supply? Uh, so I'm going to find that out today. And now the system I'm going to use to do all of the testing and everything uh, is going to have an 8700K. Unfortunately, I don't really have any CPUs that uses less power or lower end CPUs. Pretty much have more of the higher end ones. So unfortunately, I'm going to be stuck with this one, but it's going to be fine. Uh, and then for the motherboard, I'm using an ASUS Tough Z370 Gaming Plus for uh, memory, just a uh, Corsair Vengeance RGB memory, uh, hard drive, just a mechanical hard drive. And then for the GPUs, which is pretty much the second most important part, I am going to use firstly an RX 560, which uses about 70 watts of power doesn't even have power connections, so that kind of connects straight to the PCI Express port. Secondly, I'm going to use a GTX 1063 gig, which uses about 120 watts. And then finally, I'm going to use a GTX 1080 Ti. So all of these GPUs, I'm going to see if they will actually work on the 500 watts. Uh, I'm not sure about the 1080 Ti, we'll, we'll see about that one, but I'm going to see. I'm also going to overclock the 8700K to 5 gigahertz, see how much power that draws, and then I'm going to add all of the graphics cards and see how much more power they draw. Now the way I'm going to measure the power is of course with my watt meter. So I'm going to show you guys how much power it uses and all of that once overclocking and just stock and all of that. Uh, so we can see how far I can actually get with an old 500 watt power supply. So yeah, I'm pretty excited to see how far I can actually get with this. So with all of that being said, let's jump into today's video right after this. Do you live in South Africa and want to get the best deals on all the latest gaming products? Well, Rebeltech is the best place to check out. They have a huge variety of peripherals, PC components, laptops, and just everything else you would need. So go check out rebeltech.co.za to get the products you are looking for at a low price. Okay, so starting off, we have uh, just uh, the 8700K with the iGPU, so no dedicated graphics card or anything like that. Uh, and it is also running on stock settings, so it is turbo boosting to 4.7 gigahertz. And it's using, as we can see, about 675, it goes up to about 77, 78 uh, watts. So 75, 77 watts uh, isn't too bad, but now let's quickly overclock it to that five gigahertz and see how much more wattage that actually uses. And then later on, we can add in a graphics card. Now, I forgot to mention with uh, just uh, the stock settings on idle, I was reaching about 45 watts on average. Now, with it overclocked to five gigahertz on idle, we're reaching around 75 watts, but with the overclock uh, on the load settings, we're reaching around 110 to 115 watts around there. Uh, of course, the listed TDP is around 95 watts, so, so we're a bit above that, but we are overclocked to five gigahertz. So uh, it is it's a bit higher. Uh, it is also a fifth of what the entire power supply can put out so we'll, we'll see how far we can actually get perhaps if we don't overclock the cpu we will be able to use uh, the uh, the 1080 ti not sure yet but we'll wait and see all right so now currently we have the rx 
560 installed. Now again, it doesn't use any uh, external power. It just gets all of, all of its power directly from the PCI Express slot. Currently on idle, it is running at around 80 watts around there. But now let's quickly just open up, uh, let's say Skydiver and see how much watts it actually goes up to. Now currently the CPU is still overclocked to five gigahertz. And as we can see, it's going around 192 or 200 watts. So that's with just the stock settings on the RX 560, but the CPU overclock to five gigahertz. I'm going to leave it to run for a bit longer. And then after that, we're gonna add in the RX, the, oh, the GTX 1060 and see how much that actually jumps up, probably till around 300 or so on. Okay, so for our next test, we have the Gigabyte G1 GTX 1060 3 gig inside. Uh, still, the CPU is overclocked to 5 gigahertz. And we're reaching around 77 to about 80 watts on idle. Uh, so this GPU is not overclocked, the CPU is overclocked. But now let's quickly run Fire Strike and see to where it actually goes. So it's already 124 watts. 260 around their power draw on stock gpu settings but the cpu is still overclocked um i don't really think it's gonna go much higher even when i overclock it probably will go max to 300 i don't even think it'll go that high so 1060 is going still running perfectly fine on a 500 watt of power supply I'm still wondering about the GTX 1080 Ti. I think it'll still be able to run. I'm not sure about overclocking. So I haven't overclocked any of the GPUs. I'm not gonna overclock the 1060 just because it's going to be fine. But I will see if we can overclock that 1080 Ti. And if, if it's actually able to handle it. Again, it's not the best power supply. Uh, I do recommend that you go for something better than that. But just for Comparison, yeah, it's doing actually pretty well. So still, let's say about 260. Didn't really see it go any higher than that, but yeah, 260 for a GTX 1060 alongside a 8700K clocked at five gigahertz. Then as for our final graphics card, we have the Galaxy GTX 1080 Ti. Currently on stock settings, still with the CPU overclocked to five gigahertz, it's using about uh, about 80 watts or so on, uh, around about the same the, the others actually use, just because the GPU isn't really running at all. Uh, now let's quickly open up Fire Strike, running it a bit, and see how far it actually jump jumps up. Now I do think it's going to jump around 350-ish, maybe. So we'll see how far it actually goes up, and if. It's actually, the 500 watt is actually good enough to handle 8700K at five gigahertz and a GTX 1080 Ti. So 440, far above what I thought it would be. So five, 450. Now this GPU is a 500 watts marketed as, but it only has a continuous uh, power draw power output of 460 watts. It does have a peak of five, uh, can't really see, a, a, about a peak of 500 and something, uh, but it looks like without it being overclocked, it goes around to about max of four, 472, okay. So let's say 480 on max, so that's, almost more than what the power supply is able to handle. So I'm not too sure if we overclock the GPU, if it'll actually be able to handle it. But it is interesting to see that even um, for uh, less than 500 watts, you are able to actually run the 8700K and a GTX 1080 Ti. Again, I wouldn't recommend it just because the power draw and everything is not really good for the power supply because it's working at max load. And then also the GPU and the CPU, it's not really the, the best output of power that the hardware actually wants. So yeah, it's, it's running quite up there. But now let's quickly see if we can 
overclock it a tiny bit to uh, to see if it actually goes up anymore. Hopefully it doesn't shut down completely. Uh, it might damage some of the components, hopefully not. But yeah, we shall quickly see. So I'm quickly gonna overclock the GPU a bit more, well, overclock it and see how far we can push it. All right, I only added a tiny a bit of an overclock. So 110% uh, power, I clocked it uh, plus 99 megahertz on the core clock and then 300 on the memory clock. So let's quickly run a fire strike again and see how much it goes up from there. So remember previously it was around 480 watts. So, sorry, I'm just looking at the monitor above uh, the camera just to see actually what is going on there as well. So 480, uh, it's probably gonna go past 500. Tiny bit of an overclock, I should be able to push it more. Let's just see how far it actually goes. You can hear actually the fan of uh, the power supply rumping up quite a bit. So that's also the thing with, if you have a power supply that isn't really that high rated, they usually don't have a silent mode. So a silent RPM mode. So if it's running max, it's gonna be noisy. Whereas if you had a higher rated power supply or a stronger power supply, maybe now it wouldn't even, if you have like a 1200 watts, which is a bit overkill, but perhaps the fans wouldn't even spin at even this usage. 506, so let's say 510 watts. Uh, let's quickly see if we can boost it a bit more and see where it goes. Okay, so for our next overclock, the power limit is set to 120%. Uh, core clock is only about at 125 plus. Memory clock at 350 plus. So not really that much higher. I just want to take it up a step at a time just to see actually where it goes. So let's quickly run Fire Strike again. It might actually crash entirely now. Think that it's gonna just be a bit too much for the power supply to actually handle because we're already past the the constant power draw uh, for the power supply we're looking at the peak of that certain power supply so it might be a bit too much just one last time oh okay now let's <laughs> i'm gonna stop it here it was about 520 I don't really want to push it more. It could damage the GPU and the GPU is in mine. So I don't really want to push it too much. So we're looking at about 520 watts that the system drew from the power supply. Um, so yeah, that's quite a bit. So currently it's just again at 80 watts. So on stock or well on idle, it's completely fine. It's just when actually overclocking the GPU and then also the CPU where it would actually draw about 520 watts. Not constantly, it was ranging around there at 800, 480 watts, uh, but the GPU was definitely, definitely struggling. You could hear that fan ramping up quite a bit. So poor power supply, but it was actually able to handle everything. Now, just finally, I don't recommend that you do use a 500 power supply if you have a GTX 1080 Ti and a 8700K. Just because you spend so much money, you can put out a bit more for a stronger power supply. Of course, uh, I would recommend something that's uh, like an 80 plus gold or something like that if you are going for a bit of a higher system. Now, if you don't know what the difference is between the 80 plus gold, bronze, silver, titanium, platinum, and all of that is, uh, I will leave a link in the video description where you can check out the difference between all of them and just which is actually based for what you want to go for. Now, again, I've mentioned it a few times now, I. Don't, I do recommend that you actually go for something that is like 80 plus gold just because it's going to regulate the power a lot better instead of it just being an 80 plus or not even an 80 plus. Uh, so yeah, just keep that in mind because you can damage your hardware. Uh, it could have been that it's cut out and it could have fried some of my components just because a lot of the electronic components is fragile even if it is getting better uh, you never know with power it could just 
die instantly, <laughs> which nobody wants. So just go for a decent power supply. It's going to protect your hardware and it's just going to make your life easier <laughs> just if something happens. Because I have actually lost some, uh, well, my entire system to load shading where the power just cuts out and it actually fries some of your components. So yeah, good power supply is always a good choice, even though it, sometimes it is your last uh, priority for building a new system. Just get something that is equal to what the hardware you actually want to go for. But for if you do get then a 600 a watt, which is a, a bronze rated or even gold rated, you are going to be perfectly fine for something like a GTX 10, 1080, oh, well, a GTX 1060 or so on. And then also for your power, for your CPUs, it's going to be completely fine for that. Uh, personally, I run a 700 watts and that is perfectly fine for me for all that I want to do. Also, if you go for a higher wattage power supply or for a larger power supply, usually again that have uh, that uh, silent mode where if it uses less than about 25% draw, the fans is not going to spin up and it's going to be nice and quiet, which most of us usually want. So if you want a quiet power supply or just a quiet system, you might want to look into something like that. Whereas this thing is it's always running and it's always quite loud. <laughs> so yeah, that's pretty much it. I hope you guys found this uh, video uh, informative and actually saw that you could run a 500 watts power supply with a GTX 1080 Ti and an 8700K overclocked at 2 5 gigahertz. So yeah, if you guys enjoyed this video, please like, share, and comment, comment like always. Also, if you guys want any other videos like this or you have any ideas for videos you would like me to do, let me know down in the comments below. But with all of that being said, thanks for watching guys and I will check all of you next time. Cheers guys.